Good morning. So, I don't even know what I look like. I was just out in the rain. Um, I wanted to talk about uh, how we create our horse's bad manners. And I am guilty of it as well. Um, one of the things that we tend to do, especially when we have um, like stable help um, and you've got multiple horses that need, you know, you need to get through the turnout process quickly because there's more things to do, more chores to do, and just getting the horses out of the stalls is only just the beginning. So that sometimes becomes a rushed process. I've been to barns where they, you know, they carry out as many as six horses per guy, um, you know, and I mean, that's, that is a little bit of a accident waiting to happen, but um, in, in kind of their defense, they're moving school horses who generally are, you know, not really interested in doing anything with humans, so they have a lot of woe more than go, so uh, in fact, I find that I watch them drag the horses out to the paddocks. I do not and would not allow um, more than two horses at a time, and I generally don't even allow two horses at a time unless you are very familiar with my horses and you've been in my program and you know how to, you know, watch for things that uh, your horse is telling you. <clears throat> but that's not my topic here. My topic here is trying to get the job done sometimes makes us cut corners. And, like I said, I myself am guilty of that, but I'm also uh, being punished for having been guilty of that in the last couple days. So, one of the things that I started doing was I started leaving the gates open as a result of having gone out and put hay in the paddocks before I go get the horses. And then I just leave the gate open so the first group that comes through doesn't have to wait for me to stop and open the gate. So we just kind of walk through. Well, there's such a nice forward momentum going on, right? We just, we're just cruising right along. So what would be easier to keep the horses still cruising right along? Well, essentially you can rake the halters right off their faces and they don't have to miss a stride, right? Well, if you're smooth about it and you don't like rip it across their eyes, sure. I mean, that's something that I don't, I wouldn't say I'd get mad about seeing done per se, although somebody did rake a halter off my horse's face one time and I, I lost my mind, but um, she did it in a much less thought, thoughtful way. It was, it was literally like horse in stall, rake halter off face, move on to next stall. Um, I was like almost robotic and I had to stop that, but you know, it was like one time and, and we were able to get through it. Um, but anyway, uh, so I started kind of keeping my horses in stride. I started just saying, hey, we're here. The hay is straight ahead. Keep going. You know, let me get the halter off and you don't even have to tap the brakes. Well, I started to kind of feel a disconnect from one of my horses and um, in, a, in a way that was like kind of hurting my feelings because you know, he got used to me just saying, keep on going, you don't even have to stop and visit. And something that he would normally have done, he stopped doing. So that was kind of one of the things that I was like, wow, that just kind of, that, that makes me feel disconnected from him in a way that doesn't feel good. So I changed that for him and went back to visiting with him. And, th and now he's back to trying to chew on the the lead rope so I don't leave like he'll grab the lead rope if I try to leave and, and then he'll just be like no let's visit and like he's not really like trying to destroy my lead rope or anything like that he's literally doing that to prevent me from leaving um, another thing that was happening was when I did need for whatever reason to pause with the horse after we got through the gate um, I had taught them such a strict just keep on going, no need to break, you know, whatever, that when I did need them to pause, I found myself kind of chasing them with my hand up on the halter, you know, whatever, just chasing them down to try to get their halter undone. And, and I'm like, okay, so this is not good because had anybody else 
been needing to, you know, unbuckle the halter if they didn't know you could undo the cheek strap. You know, like if you have somebody helping you that's not usually your help and they've always done the buckle instead of just the cheek piece and over the ears, you know, this could be somebody who thinks they're supposed to bring the horse in, stop, undo the buckle, and here you have a horse that just won't stop. So um, I realized, like, okay, so I'm kind of creating this bad manner thing. I'm kind of say I'm teaching it, you know, I'm saying this is what we do now, you know, you don't have to stop, you don't even have to tap the brakes, I'll get this halter off of you and don't even need the brake stride. Um, and my point now is, okay, so I trained bad manners in my horses. My horses have been my horses for a million years, were able to be trained in days how to be bad, how to have bad manners. Um, so with that being said, please don't think you can't train a horse to do something good in days, okay? So now I've decided like this is unacceptable. I can't have that. I mean, people don't help me with my horses here, but if God forbid anyone ever had to, I need to make sure that they can be safe. Like that's not cool for my horses to be so rude. So what do you do? Well, you go back to teaching as if they were a beginning horse learning how to be brought into a paddock and how to be patient and how to stop and how to wait. And then, so what I do, if you need to retrain your horse how to have this halter taken off in a turnout, like if your horse is used to like basically running before the halter's even slipped down off his nose, this will help you fix that, okay? What I do is I stop the horse, obviously. That's my first step in my retraining is to stop them, not let them just keep going in stride. And then I undo the snap on the side. You know, I, I undo the buckle on the, the cheek, the throat latch piece, right? And then I put my hand on their nose. And then I take off the opposite ear. Well, do I? I want to say I take off the opposite ear and then kind of keep a hold of that and then take off the closer to me ear. And then I lower it and drop it, kind of drape it over this hand while this hand's still holding the nose piece on the horse's nose. So I still have the nose piece of the halter still on the horse. The rest of the halter is hanging off the horse. Um, and then I put my hand on their cheek, on their bare cheek. And then I tell them, okay. And at that moment, I take my hand off the cheek and I lower it off the nose. And then they're allowed to leave. So they've been, they've been held there. So the haltering process wasn't over. Because see, that's what happens with horses is that they have a tendency to guess what the procedure is, and then they try to get to the end result of the procedure so that they can end the connection with the human. <laughs> I mean, and to be perfectly honest with you, that is what they're trying to do. They're trying to end this interaction with you so they can go out to their pile of hay or to their buddies or to whatever it is that they think is so much greater out there than you. Um, so what they do is they try to get ahead of the procedure. They try to get to the end result. They try to jump the steps. So now I just remind them that there are more steps. So by adding a step, and that's what I did a whole thing on that too, is adding a step. By adding a step, you get your horse to, in, to um, develop patience that they didn't have for a procedure they thought they knew, okay? You can, you know, if you ever bought a new bridle that has a flash nose band, which I wouldn't use, but if you had a flash nose band, there's a second noseband you need to do. So your horse has to learn there's a new step. So you can teach them that there's a new step to something they thought they always knew. And you can slow them down. You can teach them patience. So, um, you know, today I reintroduced my, you know, uh, you don't walk off, you wait for me to tell you okay. And every horse said, oh yeah, I remember this, you know. And every horse patiently waited with a little lean when horses lean up over their knees, you know, if they're leaning back off their knees, they're either going to stay where they are or they're going to go backwards. Horses that are leaning up over their knees are a horse that's about to take a forward step, whether it's a forward step to go or a forward step to rebalance, a forward step. So you want to make sure that you get your horse to relax off their knees and then you okay them to leave. So that is how that gets retrained. My one horse, for example, okay, so now when you start adding food to the paddocks, okay, because we're getting into the months where the grass isn't something they're finding very easily, so um, we now need to start to supplement by giving them something to do out in the field. Now, my horses are uh, very comfortably conditioned. Um, I consider them couches and ottomans, 
but um, they do need something to keep them busy or they'll mess with each other, they'll mess with each other's blankets, they'll, if they were in wood fencing, they would mess with the wood fencing. Um, you know, these are horses that start to, you know, horses that are bored find stuff to do. So I put hay out in their paddocks not to feed them. I put hay out in their paddocks for them to have something to do. But now it's out there. <clears throat> and my turnout procedure is low man first, high man last. So low man gets a chance to check out each flake of hay on his way through and he can get away from the gate. Next low man can get out there, but first low man has the freedom to keep going. He's not stuck at the gate. He's not being met at the gate with another higher man horse that wants to now challenge his even wanting to come in. So low man out first, second low man, third low man, whatever, all of them go out. Well, the problem with that comes when there's food. And it's not between the horses. The problem with that is now you have to be careful for your safety, okay? Because high man goes through that gate. He knows, well, now this is my territory. Humans aren't normally involved here. And they're all out there eating my hay. Get out of my way is kind of the, the impression you'll get from your horse. So that's the one that you need to absolutely say, excuse me, until I say, okay, you are not to leave me. No matter how anxious you are to make sure he doesn't get another bite than of that beautiful flake that belongs to you, or she doesn't get another bite of her beautiful flake that belongs to you. You need to stand right here until I'm done and I give you the okay to leave. Now, those little steps really don't take a long time more than your actual turnout process if you were to rake the halters off their face. I even got to the point to where it became almost like I was scoring myself and how gently I was able to remove the halter in stride and drop it off their nose and neither of us lost, lost our pace. It became kind of like where I, oh yeah, I did that really good today or oh man, I kind of hooked his nose a little bit on that one. Don't get in those games because you are training your horse to have bad manners. I'm guilty of it too, you know, and it's not the first time I've had to retrain my horses because I got into that, you know, it's almost like it's just, I'm mixing it up for me, but I'm screwing myself by doing that. So good manners can be retrained, bad manners can be trained too. So make sure that you know what you, I always want to make sure that my horses are trained for the person who doesn't know my horse. That's the best way to train your horse. Train your horse for the person who doesn't know your horse because that's the person you need to make sure is safest.